John Wertheim and the editors from Tennis.com, Peter Bodo, Tom Parada, and Andrew Friedman debate where drug testing is in the sport. A lot of memorable moments in tennis in 2013, some less savory moments as well. And like all sports, tennis has had to grapple with anti-doping and drug testing. And Pete, where, where do you think we are just overall as a sport in terms of tennis and anti-doping? Well, I think we're getting closer, and I don't want to say to nailing the the, the guys who need to be nailed because I, I don't know and it's you know, one of the really frustrating things for a journalist covering this is if you really want to have authority on this subject, if you really want to speak in, in realities and facts, you have to dedicate almost all your time to poking around in the records, to interviewing lab technicians. I mean, it's really, really hard. There are people on this side of the fence say, well, the testing regimen is really weak. Talk to somebody else, they say, well, they're doing a new kind of testing, it's foolproof. And you know, to, to really sort out, this is, this is all like real deep science, so it's, it's really tough to get there. I think what was striking to me this year is that they're almost casting a wider net and catching bigger fish. I mean, Victor Troisky and Marin Cilic were two guys who were busted this year, and those are, those are two pretty big names, you know. So it, it seems to me like the system is kind of the system is kind of working, and you know, it's also discouraging that these guys, you know, whatever the reality is, they're all fighting back and all claiming innocence. How much of this is just inherent? This is just part and parcel with anti-doping. It's inherently a messy process. It's necessarily entails some obfuscation because of one positive test. The player might have an appeal, there might be a B sample. In the case of Silich, where we had a case where he actually went to Wimbledon and then withdrew on account of a knee injury that we now know was a bogus excuse. And I agree, the perception is terrible that there's this complicity and this excuse and that here he was with this positive drug test and they were trying to pass off that this was a physical injury. But the flip side of that is, as soon as a guy tests positive the first time, do you immediately issue a press release saying so? I mean, it, it's, it's really sort of a sticky situation. His I, case, I mean, I found his whole explanation fairly compelling. I mean, I don't even know if it's disputed that his mother picked up some medicine from a pharmacy and it, they were in a place that wasn't their first language and, and there was a, the substance that he was, was in his system was actually something that is permissible outside of competition. I mean, it seemed like right. such a small infraction. Well, it's discouraging when someone like Djokovic, basically, who had you know, come out, you know, had, had put on the cloak of the mantle of righteousness and come out, you know, preaching about how important drug testing was in that, you know, a couple months ago, really, before the Troisky case, and was, you know, such a firm, just like Murray, too, a firm proponent. And then Djokovic Djokovic, because his buddy Troisky gets busted, is now, you know, saying that the system doesn't work and you know they have He's no lost credibility. Faith. Yeah, like, well, yeah, simply because his buddy said I didn't do it. Well, you know, I got news for you. Your buddy could be lying to you. I can understand where he's coming from in that one case, though, because the problem with that case is that Troisky says that basically someone told him you don't have to take this test well, today, well, today. because someone, the, right, administrator the administrator, lives. right, told him he doesn't have to take the test today because he has this fear of needles and whatever, and I don't want to give blood. And, and he was told that that was going to be okay. So it's a he said, she said. No one else is there to say. Djokovic's point is G that given, uh, the players don't trust the agency that's administering this. We want that communication to be clear. That's why it feels like it's a bad suspension. I mean, I think players need to be more careful with what they put in their body, maybe, you know, to the point of almost nothing, you know, during a tournament. And I think from the administration side, I think something like the Chilich case does look very strange, you know, it, that he was kind of given the, the silent um, the silent pass, you know, and he was able to kind of feign this injury and, and that was the reason given and it doesn't look good. Is this just the reality of sports today? I think it is, and the doping it is, because look, at, it's cops and robbers. It's cops and robbers as we sit here. This guy's wrong, no, that guy's wrong, no, that guy. You know, everyone's looking for the, for the, for the smoking gun, and look, there, there's very rarely a smoking gun. I mean, look at Lance Armstrong. You know, how long did we go before the truth came out? Who would have thought, you know... Well, Bonds, McGuire, um, Marion Jones never failed a drug test. But. Exactly. So you just, you just got to play it as strictly and simply as you can by the rules. That's why I think Djokovic was wrong, too, because you just got to go, look, the guy didn't do it. Sorry, but that's it.